Okay, so now we are going to look at some characterization theorems. So these are theorems that will give us characterizations of concave functions when the functions are differentiable, or if you like, characterization theorems for differentiable concave functions. So uh, there's going to be a first order, first derivative kind of characterization, and then we'll also have a second derivative kind of characterization. The second derivative characterization is probably one that at least in for real functions you're already familiar with. But we're going to start off with a first order characterization theorem, which uh, there's a good chance that you're not familiar with. And this one is actually pretty useful. We use it quite often. So here's that first theorem, or first order theorem, really. So uh, this says that uh, now here I'm using capital X as the domain of our function f. It's in RL, it's in Euclidean space. And uh, we need to assume, well I didn't write it here, we need to be assuming throughout that capital X is a convex set because we're potentially, we're talking about functions that are potentially concave uh, and um, concave functions are only defined for uh, functions that have uh, convex sets for domains. And by the way, I should add, I don't think I said this at the outset, I should add that we're doing everything here for concave functions and for maximization. Uh, and of course, for concave functions, we've seen that global and local maximization, we don't we can dispense with the, the adjectives. Um, and of course, everything that we say here works in the same way for uh, convex functions and minimization. And so I won't say that again, and I probably should, should have said that up front, but <laughs> we've got that out of the way now. So uh, we're, we're working with maximization and with concave functions. So we have uh, a convex set, capital X, that's an open set, and we're working with a function now that's differentiable on everywhere on its domain. And so the function will be concave if and only if this condition with the asterisk is satisfied. So notice that this condition says something about any pair of points in the domain. I've called them x and x bar. You could call them x and y. Any pair of points in the domain x, it's got to be the case that this expression on the left, where we have f of x bar plus the gradient of f times delta x, actually, has got to be greater than or equal to f of x. So let's see if we can kind of draw a picture of what's, what's going on there. So I will do that uh, over here. Let's... Uh, Let's say this is x bar, and uh, let's say that this is x. And so this, uh, this condition, the star, says that it's got to be the case that, uh, let me draw here uh, my function f. And so here we have f of x bar. Over here we have f of x. And what this condition says then is that uh, if I take my gradient of f at x bar, that's supposed to be a tangent there. Uh, so I take my gradient. And so this point here is going to be f of x bar, this vertical value, plus the gradient of f at x bar times this difference x minus x bar, which I'm going to refer to as delta x. So delta x, I only drew the arrow this far, far but it, it's this whole x minus in fact, let's say that's x minus x bar. So this is times delta x. 
So what I've drawn is the picture for R, where the domain is just the real numbers. So let's say this is R. So this would be the derivative. In fact, let me even write then that this would be f prime at x bar times delta x. And so you can see the geometry here. Uh, it seems pretty obvious that if the function is concave, then it bends downward relative to the straight line, which is tangent to the graph at x bar. And so indeed, it must be the case that the value uh, of f over here at x must be lower than the value along the line, which is f of x bar plus, in this picture here, f prime at x bar times delta x. So intuitively, it seems pretty clear that this must be the case if the function is concave. And also, now you can see that this picture is describing what's going on in the theorem. On the left-hand side, we have f of x bar plus the gradient times delta x in general for in RL. Uh, and on the right-hand side, we just have f of x. So uh, let's see if we can prove this theorem. And so uh, I, it says if and only if. So it is a characterization of concave function. Uh, in terms of first derivatives. And so it's if and only if, so we're going to have to go both ways. So let's do a proof over here. And uh, I'll first do uh, the proof in which we'll say that uh, if f is concave, that implies uh, the condition star. Okay, so we're taking an arbitrary x bar and an x, and I'm letting delta x be the difference x minus x bar. And so let's start by writing the uh, gradient of f at x bar times delta x. That is, of course, as we've seen earlier, that's equal to the directional derivative in the direction delta x evaluated at x bar. And that uh, directional derivative is the limit as, let's say, h goes to 0 from above, from the positive direction, uh, of 1 over h times f uh, at x bar plus h times delta x minus, uh, minus f at x bar. And that's the limit as h goes to 0, 1 over h. So this expression, the argument of f here, of course, is just going to be, since this delta x is x minus x bar, this is going to be 1 minus h times, uh, well, hold on, I need to put the f in there. <laughs> so that's not going to work. Uh, let's, uh, let's take this off and make sure we get the f in there. Uh, this is f of, and I'll try to make a large parenthesis here, this is going to be 1 minus h times x bar plus h times x. So that's what this thing inside the argument in here is, since delta x is x minus x bar. And this is then minus f of x bar. And now, since f is concave, we know that this expression, f of 
this argument here has got to be greater than or equal to, uh, well, we'll write this stuff over here first, This has got to be greater than or equal to f, well, let's uh, not move quite so quickly here. Let's, let's uh, move a little too fast. 1 minus h, f of x bar, uh, plus h, f of x, uh, and then don't want to close off the brackets yet, so this then should be minus f of x bar and uh, we can go another step further. This is the limit as h goes to 0 from above of 1 over h uh, times, now I have f of x bar here, 1 times f of x bar minus f of x bar, so that drops out. So all I've got here now remaining is h, and I'll have to put another brackets here, h times f of x minus f of x bar. All right? f of x bar minus f of x bar, so that dropped out. Now I've got h times f of x minus h times f of x bar. Now, of course, 1 over h times h, that's just 1. So those h's kind of, we can throw those out. And what we have now is the limit as h goes to 0 of just this. And that's a number. There isn't any h in here. So that's just a number. So uh, that means that we have this is equal to that number. This is equal to f of x minus f of x bar. And so I can now bring this term over to the left hand side and I have f of x bar plus gradient f evaluated at x bar times delta x is uh, well, I left something out here. I left out the greater than or equal here because the concavity said that this is greater than or equal to this, which I believe I said verbally, but <laughs> I didn't write it in there. So uh, this is greater than or equal, so that means this is greater than or equal to uh, um, f of x. And I do believe that's exactly what we have over here in our theorem. So, in fact, that gives us a completion of the proof in this direction. So let me just write this in parentheses because we're not done with the proof. We're only done with the proof in this direction. We're done with the proof that says if f is a concave function, then this star condition has to be satisfied. This star first order condition on the gradient has to be satisfied. And so all we've done is prove that if f is concave, things have to look like this picture. This has got to be actually the right picture. Okay, so now we're going to have to take this off so we'll have enough space to uh, prove the converse, to prove that uh, if this star condition is satisfied, then f is in fact concave function. So uh, we'll take this off now and we'll be back in just a moment.